Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to talk about expiry dates and how to create a status with a couple of different formulas so you can easily see if an agreement, if a payment is due, is overdue, is about to get expired. With a couple of simple formulas will let you very easily know if the date is arriving for any document or payment to expire or if it has expired for the days you want it to let you know. So I know you're going to love it, but if you want to download this and more than 150 templates, Google Sheets, Google Apps Script, Google Forms, you can go to the Patreon page in the description below and you can ask me anything about these projects. If not, just subscription to the channel. It's more than enough. Thank you so much. Thank you particularly to my patrons. Without them, this would not be possible. So we will begin with a very simple table that has some documents and some expiry dates. This won't only work for documents. It will work for subscriptions. This will work for payments. This will work for birthdays and for much, much more. So the idea is that we want to know if a date has expired is about to expire or has already expired a long time ago. This is very, very useful, for example, in agreement. If you know that an agreement is going to be, for example, a partnership agreement is going to expire in six months, then you have enough time. You need an alert. So you have time to renegotiate the agreement or to renew the agreement. Or if you know that a payment is due tomorrow, it's good to be alerted so that you can monitor if a payment is done, even send a notification to the customer. Don't forget that tomorrow your invoice is due. Or if the expiry date was 10 days ago, it's good to know. So you can send an email saying, hey, you were supposed to pay 10 days ago or something like that. Not necessarily for emails, but for you to know how is the status of your expirations. It doesn't matter if we're talking about money, we're talking about documents, we're talking about uh, subscriptions or whatever. So this is what we want to do. So there are a couple of ways of doing this. The first one, we're going to use an, an auxiliary column called status. Here, we're going to show if a date has expired or not. As easy as that. Expired or not expired. That's it. How can we do this? For this, we need to have a today function. The today function, well, it's, it says it in the name, is the current date as a date value. So we need to write today and open and close parentheses, and this is today's date. So now we have the date of the expiration, we have the date of today, so now we can compare it with a very simple subtraction. If we, from the expiry date, we subtract today, we're going to have a number. If this number is positive, then it is up to date. If it's less than zero, then it is expired. As easy as that. So we don't need to have today in every column. So we're just going to copy this today and replace it here for C2. So it's today minus the expiry date, which is C2. And that's it. Then we autofill. And we see all these negatives that are expired and all these positives that are up to date. So we can move this status. We're going to remove this column with control alt minus. Here we're going to call this difference, but you could remove this column. It's just for learning purposes. So now that we have the difference, we can do this in a couple of ways. The easiest way is with an if function. The if function will say, hey, if this is less than zero, then you can say expired or do or whatever. And then if this is positive, equal or greater than zero, then this will be not expired or however you want to call it. Okay, so this is the first way to do it. And again, you don't need the difference. You can just copy this today minus C2 and paste it here instead of the D2. So you don't need the, the difference column. Let's, let's drag it down and now you have it, okay? This we can 
expand it and have more status, more states. Actually, here we can call this state. Because this is very simplistic. Maybe we can have another state that is, uh, if this is less than 30, then you can say 30 day do or whatever, pass do. And if I have 20 days before expiration, then I can say one month till expiration. Then I can have a lot of buckets and um, categories where I can classify my expiration dates. Okay. This could also work for produce. You buy, for example, a restaurant. If you have inventory, then you could also have this expiration uh, like scale. If you want to have more status, then there are two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you two ways. I need to move this state two and state three. The first one is with a function called ifs. It's very similar to this, but with the possibility of adding multiple conditions. Normally in the past in Excel, in, in ancient Excel, 20 years ago, you had to do it with nested ifs. So you had one if, and then if you wanted to do another, then you needed to nest it here or nest it here. And then inside this, you will nest another one and another one. So it's very weird. It's very difficult to read. I know that the most experienced of us have lived through this, but today I think there's a much, much easier function. And this one is called ifs. The key here is multiple logical expressions. So let's start again with the first one. The first one was that expiry date minus today would be less than zero. If this is true, then we're going to name this expire. Now we're going to add a new one. And the new one may be, for example, less than 10. So C2 minus today less than three or than five, then you can call this about to expire. And finally, we're going to do the last one that is the not expired one. So different than the if function where you can just leave a default value here, you need to be very specific. So there are two ways of doing this. The first way is do the inverse function of this. This will mean C2 minus today greater or equal than five. If this is true, then we're going to say not expired or normal or whatever. This is a bit weird. Another way of trying this is to write the word true. And it will also work because this just means that if this other condition is not true, then if this last condition that is will always be true, then just write not expired. I, I know it's a bit weird to understand the first time, but you get used to it. Okay. So here you can add as many conditions as you'd like, as many states as you like, but just be careful regarding the order. So in our case, we're having less than zero, then less than five, and then greater than five. So if you are going to do a new one, and this is what I want you to pause the video and think, if you're going to do a new one that says that the, if this is less than 30, then you say, if this is less than minus 30, we're going to write more than 30 days past due, then where would you put it? After this one, be between this and this, or between this and this, or as a first. So it's very important to know the order. Given that here we are going from negative to positive, from less to greater, then I would venture to say that you need to put it as a first function. So C2 minus today less than, let's say minus 30, then you will say pass due greater than 30 days or just greater than 30 days and that's it. Greater than 30 days pass due. Hit enter and let's drag it down. And now you have it, okay? So it's easy to do, just be careful with the order of the conditions. One last thing, an advanced thing you could do, so you don't have to write every time C4 minus today, 
is or refer to this column if you're going to leave it but i would assume you're going to delete it at the end you can do you can insert it inside a let function the let function lets us create variables so we're going to create a variable called difference diff and then comma and then we're going to write this c4 minus today so now i'm going to replace all of these c4 minus today with the word diff here and then here and then here and that's it so for me it's a more readable function and then if you want to change this anytime it's not c4 but d4 then you just change it in one place and not in four or five if you have 10 conditions then you don't have to change it in 10 conditions okay let's hit enter now let's drag it down up and down. okay finally as a bonus i'm going to show you if you have a lot of status then you what we could do is create a table here i'm going to create a table where i'm going to say the difference and here the status or the state you could create it in a different sheet but just for being easier for us we are going to do it in the same so i'm going to create six states the first one is that if it is less the difference is less than minus 90 i'm going to call this greater than 90 days past due and then minus 60 greater than 60 days plus due and the same for minus 30 and then zero if it's less than zero it will be expired and five about to expire and 30 less than 30 is one month to expire and the let the other one that is let's say less than a thousand or ten thousand or whatever will be normal okay something like that so doing it with functions it will take us a lot because then we need to do doing it with conditionals or with ifs then we need to do six seven functions there is a formula that will let us do this in an easier way so we're going to do x lookup what are we going to look up well what we've always done in this video so this is d4 minus today where are we going to look it up in this column i maybe you can leave it open if you're going to add more rows to this table in the future so this is what i'm going to look for and when i find it what do i want to bring and i want to bring this state if you don't find anything just leave this empty and finally and this is the key of this is we're going to leave this fifth argument as one we go here to help we can see that here it says match mode how to find a match for the search sheet zero is an exact match but normally xlookup and vlookup do exact match but there is a really nice trick is that if you change this for one this will be not an exact match but it first looks for an exact match or the next value that is bigger than the search key okay so for example if i'm looking minus 100 then the next value greater than a hundred minus 100 is minus 90. if you're looking for 100 then the value that is the next value that is greater than 100 is a thousand or 10,000 in here and this will be the one it looks so it's like a it buckets or categorizes value so this works really well in this specific case so we're going to close it hit enter drag it down this is not working because i did it with d2 and actually c2 let's hit enter and let's see if it's working so this is minus 14 one more to expire perfect I just realized that this state two I had it backward. So the one is, that is wrong is this one. This should be C2 minus today. Perfect. And now let's see again this is state three. So we have it in 
C3 minus J, and the difference should be backwards. I had it all wrong. So this is the difference we're working with is C2 minus J. Okay, now it makes sense. Sorry about that. So now you can see that with this very simple formula, now you have here is one month to expire. This is normal because we're uh, looking for 90 days. This is more than 90 days past due. This is has expired. This has expired. This is normal, normal. This is expired. Maybe here we can put minus one. So it's just, it will, so zero, it's not uh, on that. And everything is working really nice. Okay. So this is, this formula is much easier than having to do all of these ifs. So this is what I would prefer. And it allows you to have a lot of different states and it's very, very simple to do. You don't have to have them in order if you are using XLOOKUP. Okay. Another thing you could do is have this as references. So you could have a table similar to this one and then you would have minus 30 and then you would, instead of minus 30, you would do this, choose this cell I4, and then instead of 30 days plus do, you will choose this cell. So in this way, and very important for you to uh, fix it with F4, so that you have these dollar signs before the letter and before the number, and then when you drag it down, if this status is ch has changed, you will change it just here. You see? And you don't have to change the formula every time. So you could do this for all of the status. The last thing I would invite you to do is to change this to a table. So you will hit format and then convert to table. Why am I doing this? So you don't need to do array formulas or anything like, like that. So you're adding a new document. You just write 11 and then you already have this done. And when you put the, the right date, everything will work nicely and you don't have to worry about dragging formulas or anything. If you want to know more about tables, I have a video talking about that. And if you want to take this to the next level and do some nice conditional formatting, this will be my next video when I'll show you how to do not only the status that we've done here, but also color this so you can very easily see if something has expired, has is about to expire or has already expired a long time ago. Thank you so much, especially to my Patreons. See you in the next video about this topic.